Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the CRM Package Deployer tool. If you remember in the last video, we talked a little bit about the configuration migration tool where you basically could create schemas that you could then use to export specific type of configuration information from one CRM deployment and then create basically a data file that you could turn around and import into another environment. Package Deployer allows us to basically take multiple solutions and create an installation package. And so the nice thing around this is now we can install all of these solutions in kind of one fell swoop in the order that we define. We also have the capability, if we want to, to include data files. So like that configuration migration file that we that we worked with, we could actually include that into our installation package. So what you're doing is you're designing an install package that defines what specific solutions in the application you want to install, as well as any data that you want to import into the application. And then you actually have the capability using the tool to actually go in and define, you know, what how what the name of the file is, what the screens look like when people click through the individual pieces of information. And you also even have the capabilities to do additional items with that. So for example, let's say you import a bunch of records um, into the application using Package Deployer. One of the things that you may want to do is trigger all of your rollup fields to be updated. This utility gives you the capability to put code behind specific processes to allow that functionality to take place. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this would be done. So within the CRM SDK for 2016, there are some templates that you can install that allow you to create different types of components. So once you go into the templates folder of the SDK, you can then go ahead and install the templates. And one of the templates that they have is your CRM package. So this is what you could use for package deployment within the application. So you're going to give it a name. And then we'll create the project here real quick. Once your package, is, so once you've gone through and it's created your package, you're, now you're basically ready to go. Now, a couple of quick things. So the first thing that you're going to see is this package folder. So this package folder is where you are going to upload or basically put the information that you want to include in this particular uh, scenario. So any solution files, any data files, basically anything that needs to be located in here. So this is what's also going to get deployed with the package when you start to install it. So this is going to be the location for the item. So in the content folder, what I can basically do in here is I can go ahead and right click on the package folder. I can then go ahead and add, and I'm going to add an existing item. Now I have a data file and some solution files that are already created out of my desktop, so I'm just going to go ahead and include those here real quick. So I'll take this data file and I'll take this tip of the day package demo. Now we also need to make sure that this information is copied out into this folder always whenever we deploy this information. So the other thing that we want to do is make sure that whenever the package is generated, this information is available. So for each file that you bring in, you're going to click on it. You're going to go down into the properties and you're going to change the properties to always copy to the output directory. So that way, all of this information will always be copied and available when you're working with it. Otherwise, it's not going to pull that information in as you're going through. So the next thing we want to do is work with the import config file. This is where we're going to define different types of situations. Now there's different tags that you can work with. So one of the things that you can do is define what type of deployment options you want to do with this. So for example, if you don't have sample data, sample data in the environment that you're working with, you can actually determine that you want the sample data installed when the package is running. You can also determine that you want it to wait for the sample data to install so it's available so you can work with it. You also have some options around the agent Dex desktop options. So particularly if you're trying to do any USD deployments and you're using package deployer for that information, this is where you now have the capabilities to kind of define what specific elements you want to work with in here. Now, one of the key things is if you use the migration tool, there is a CRM data import file. So this is where you would define the name of the data import file that you were working with from the migration tool. So in this case, I'll just call this data.zip. 
then I also have to define what solutions I want to bring in to this particular package. And so this is where I can list out each solution that's in my deployment. So this is where I now have the capabilities to define whatever specific solution name that I want to work with. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and grab my zip file here, populate my information here, and then it's ready to go. Now, this is where I could also put additional configuration files or additional zip files into here if I wanted to. Now, the other thing that you will see is it doesn't necessarily have to be just configuration migration data files. You can use zip files, you can use CSV files, you can use text files. So these are if you had any other types of files that you wanted to import into the application, this is where you would now have the capabilities to define what those specific files are so you could work with it. So this is where you would build those individual situations. Now there's there's different items around, you know, the declaring the different fields and the different items. Since we're not going to bring any of those particular items in, we're not going to worry about it. But if you had external files or extra files that you wanted to bring in, this is where you could bring that information in. Now, for our purposes today, we'll just go ahead and just kind of remove that information for now, just so we can work with it from that standpoint. So this is just a very simple import config file that defines the data file that I want to work with, as well as the zip information that I want to work with. Now the next piece that I need to determine is from an install package standpoint, what those screens are going to look like when people are kind of walking through those. So if I go into the package folder and I expand content, you'll see that I have different language options here that I'm working with. So this is for English for, for US. One of the things that I could do in here is I could copy this file and I could define what these different screens look like for different languages. So I could set up like an EN, you know, or a Spanish or, you know, different items for different languages that I wanted to work with. But there's different utility folders that I want to define with. So in here now, I would go into my welcome screen for my welcome HTML. I would expand the HTML file and open up the default HTML file. And this is where I can kind of define what I want this information to look like. So this has got all of my different referencing links and, and different items. So the main thing just for our purposes today that we want to be concerned with is the template title. So what is going to be the template title for our package? So in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and call this tip of the day package. Then I can come down here and this is where I have kind of my common title. So this is where I can define my common title information. So again, I'll do the same thing. And then this is where I can kind of define once that screen loads and the wizard kind of prompts the information, this is where I can kind of define if there's any additional information that I want to, to present here. So I could, you know, say something like, click next to continue. So this is now going to go ahead and prompt us to click next and continue on with that information. So this is going to be what they'll see when they're ready to import that process. So this is going to be the ready option as we're going through and getting ready to work with that. Then we would have our end HTML. So what do we want to happen after the package kind of deploys and after we've come through that information? So again, I can open up the default HTML file for this and I could do the same type of situation. So what's the title template that I want to work with? I'll give it my tip of the day option. I'll come down here, same thing. And then if I have any, you know, descriptions or any other items that I wanted to put at the end, I certainly could. Maybe in this point, I just simply want to define that the import was completed. And then I'll mark it from there. And then I'm going to go ahead and save all of my files. The next piece to this is where I would actually come in and kind of start customizing the package itself. And so within the package itself, there is a package template.cs file. This is where I actually have the capabilities to start 
kind of defining what specific items are going to be displayed within the screen. So this is some different situations where I can determine what to do before import stages. This is where I can determine if there's any after primary import option. So this is actually where if I wanted to, I could basically include code that would go in and maybe update some type of record. So this is that situation where maybe I'm importing a bunch of data. I have a bunch of roll up fields on those data that I want to work with. This is where I could actually put in code to basically run the rollups or the update the rollup fields on that information after the data has been imported into the application. So this is where I would be able to kind of define any additional items that I would want to take place afterwards. If I go into properties, these are just some individual properties that can be modified to further customize the import utility. So the first the item that you see here is get name of import. So this is basically a short name for the package that I want to import in. So we'll just call this And then if I scroll down, then I've got basically the, if there's any, where's the folder coming in? So in this case, we notice that we put everything into the package folder. This is where that information is going to be deployed in the package to folder. This is where if I wanted any description information, where I wanted to define kind of specialized description information, I could optionally put that information in here. And then if I wanted kind of a longer name to be displayed as part of the import, I could do that. So I'm gonna say tip, we'll just do this. And then once I've got everything in here, again, I could do additional items on this if I wanted to, but once I have everything in here, I could go ahead and just save everything. Now, obviously, depending upon, you know, what other stuff you want to do, there's a lot more configuration and customization stuff that you could do in this to really, you know, fire off this information nicely from a customized experience. But for just getting it kind of set up, this is kind of a nice starting point. So now really we're ready to go ahead and build and deploy this. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and build the solution. So it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna build my sample kind of package that I have for the application and, and kind of get ready to deploy it. So that's kind of the 10,000 mile overview on how to build the packages and, and get them set up for deployment. In the next video, I'll actually show you how to go ahead and deploy them using both package deployer, but also going in and, and using PowerShell to, to go ahead and do that. But I want to make sure we have enough time to really delve in and kind of devote those. There's a lot of other options when you're building these that you have the capabilities to kind of define based upon what it is that you want to do. And I'll include a link in the video just so you can kind of go out to the MSDN article and see all the different things that you can define when you're working through and building that up. But this will at least get you started to see how you build a package and get it ready for deployment. So again, from all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek. I just want to say thank you very much. Take care, everybody, and have a good one.